Yeah, that was, uh, it's unfortunate, but it's part of what we do. I mean, he just fell and, you know, it's his left wrist, it's not his right. He may be out three weeks, maybe out four, hoping the shorter, but let's, I'm not going to rush him. You know, they even said maybe two when I'm like, stop. You know, so, and it was just, he felt like that. Not that one, it was on the other one. Not his shooting. So. Talking yeah. about Sunday about this being such a key period of all the practice. Time. Today was better. I just, I went, I try to think back when I was at UMass. Like you can draw on other experiences. So, I, when we had Edgar and Carmelo and Dante and Dana and Marcus Camby and Tyrone Weeks, I played six guys, Tyrone Weeks, Tyrone Weeks probably played 15 minutes a game. Um, the other guys were walk-ons and a couple scholarship players that were not, you know, and I had one guy coach the, that team against the team I coached. And that's who we scrimmaged every day, and we scrimmaged, and we played. So that's what I did today. The only problem is that gray unit beat the white and blue unit some. But let's get to where this is who we are. Let's scrimmage with who we have. Ben and Brennan and, you know, uh, Dante played a little bit of half court today. You know, he didn't move great, but he played some half court. And I'm not going to front it. It is what it is. I've done it before. It's not like I haven't. Um, and it kind of got me going, like even that last night. I played a small lineup tonight, or today. The small lineup being guards and Khalil and one big. It didn't look bad. I mean, I'm trying different stuff. How would we play with this unit? And, um, you know, trying to hold guys accountable. You know, I've, I've been a little bit tougher on the guys, which is what I do during this time of the year. It's not acceptable. Some of the stuff is not their fault. I did stuff today that I hadn't done that they needed uh, some fundamental stuff. So, but it is, look, when I, every team has issues. I just hope everybody else's issues are worse than ours. But every team has issues. It's what it is. And as a coach, how do you make this end up being a positive? So when he comes back in three, four weeks, that we have a team that can play different ways and we're adding a veteran that's been out. Okay, early in the preseason, you were thinking if we got to play one of those wings at the four, it's probably uh, Keon. Are you leaning a little more towards Khalil or trying I'm, Khalil? The, the, I want to try him, and I'm, I'll tell you why. Um, he's he's more physical, and if we're playing another team that has a six six physical guy, I think Khalil can play him better. And I'm not sure there's any fours that can guard him. Um, here, here's what I say. Khalil last game, he was one for seven, okay? But five of those shots that he took were absolutely straight. The other two were near the basket. The other five, he missed, but they were straight. You guys know how I am about that stuff. My prediction will be, if not this game, the next game, he's going to go like an eight for eight. Because he'll make the first, and, and he shoots them straight all the time. He doesn't, there's no variation. He's just not making them right now. But, um, like I said to him, man, you know, here, this kid wants to be here, wants to be coached by me. Now, when it's not going perfect, whether it be for Tyrese or him or Johnny or Keon, we're six games in. It's, it's, we had a bunch of guys last year and the year before and the year before, early in the year, not playing well. And people looking at him like, I don't think he's that good. And by the end of the year, he's with the Miami Heat or he's with the Charlotte Hornets or he's with the... Sacramento Kings, or he's with the, you know, I mean, it, it just takes time for these kids. And they have to be patient. I have to be impatient being patient. To, I got to push this along a little faster than they're used to. But Can, can this time be good for guys like EJ and Khalil yeah. and for you all just yeah. to give them an opportunity? Yes. To, or force yes, them we did stuff today. I'm saying, like, there was stuff today to go at different guys. Here we go. And then you got to own your performance. You know, the old thing, if you played me more and had me shooting, okay, you're playing more and shooting more. What? What is it now? Is it the moon, the sun, the stars? What is it? The barber, the butcher? Who is it? The coach? Who is it? So it, it, it is, 
you know, own your performance. So we got great kids, I'm just telling you. I walk in every day, like I was excited about being here. We're practicing again after Epma, they're gonna go to my house and eat and sleep. They all sleep at my house now. Um, then after, we're coming back and we're going again. Um, tonight we're gonna have a nice meal tomorrow. We'll be at Salvation Army, uh, serving meals at Lundergren family again. Uh, does unbelievable, we've been doing it for 20 some years. And I want them to feel that they're blessed, that people are struggling, that you have an impact on people, that it's, you, you make this about other people, life becomes more joyful. If you're so focused on you and your own, it's, it's a small world. Um, you know, I'm reminded of today that I'm like their people. I watch Brad. If they don't pass Brad the ball, I'm mad. There may be three guys on the team. I don't even know their names. <laughs> and how about this? When Brad subbed out, what do you think I do? Change channels. I go in the other room and watch TV until my wife says he's back in. And then I go, I mean, I'm like everybody else's father. And you've got to accept, like, that kind of stuff. And mother. Ellen's like... I'm having to tell her, stop it. He's not going to take 25 shots. Just let, he's doing fine. So, you know, they got to deal with that as an 18-year-old too. And it's not just mom and dad, it's sister, brother, coaches, AAU coach, anyone that's trying to ingratiate themselves. We, this is what we do here, is get them to grow up fast and get them to own their performance. But you got to have great kids, and we do. If you don't have great kids that come from good homes, can't do this, especially when you get down in numbers. Then it's even harder. John, the last game, you sort of, if I heard you right, you, you said Nate was like trying to live up to something yeah. rather than just playing. Yeah. What, what, what is he? What was he distracted by? Well, it doesn't matter now. He got some time to think about it. But he was. I think the way he was trying to prove himself that I, I belong here versus all right now they're expecting me to do X, Y, Z, and it's a different mindset. You, you just, you know, you, you're hungry and humble the whole time. Hungry to get better, hungry to show that you belong, but I'm humble when things go well because we know this thing can flip on you real fast. But, um, you know, we, this team, we just need time. We need time and practice. Like next week is, I, am, I cannot wait till next week I'm trying to get the president to shut down the university for a week so I can do some two-a-days. They got class. Those classes get in the way of things. But. Tom, if you've had some more injuries the last few years, does that change your thinking at all about filling out a, a roster? I know that, that you've been pretty active. It does. I just, I, I just, you know, when I had 11 and 12, it was Derek and Dom, and they understood. Now they're both playing professionally. Both of them are playing professionally. But they understood they were 11 and 12. It doesn't mean they weren't coached. It means the opportunity to get in the game, they weren't getting in until 10 other guys got in. And they knew that. It's hard. I mean, who's that guy? You know, the, 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 when you come to Kentucky, the, the, one of the things that's the, the positive is that kids learn, they take on this culture, they, they get there faster, they move faster, and they perform at a higher level. The other part of this is everybody expects it to be on the same pace for every kid, and it's just not. You know, PJ's path was two years. Willie's path was three years. Darius's path was four years. I mean, it's, they're different. So the curse is if you go to Kentucky, you leave after a year. That's it's not how it is. You might. You may play yourself into it. You may be working so hard in that gym, Tyler Hero, Shea Alexander, 7 o'clock in the morning, that you will yourself to this stuff. Brandon Knight, you may be that guy. But if you think it's just if I just play games, it's going to happen, it won't. It takes you more time then. If you're not going to get in the best shape of your life, it's going to take you more time. But what's so you get to be around me for two years? What's the problem? <laughs> Cal, how much were you holding Brad back? <laughs> you know it was amazing. I'm watching the game, and the, the team basically 
played him no catch. So wherever he was, it was like he was a box in one. And here I am watching, and my wife's mad, and I said, you don't understand what they're doing. So he has, he, he has two shots. He makes one. One he missed, they almost blocked. And the TV, the TV crew saying, why is Calipari not shooting? They're saying Calipari, I don't know the name. But why is Calipari not shooting? Like, he only has two shots. He's like on, he's been on fire, get him shots. Well, guess what, the other team know and took him away, which, what a compliment it is. And I'll say this, look, he had his plan. I'm gonna redshirt, so I have two years to play. Really? Tell me why, because dad, I may want to go somewhere else just depending on if I want to play. Okay. So now it comes time to choose schools. He didn't want to look at any D2s. And I'm like, why don't you throw a Division II in there or two, you know, go. No, I'm, I'm either going to this school, this school, or that school. All right. So basically, and I've told him this, has more courage than I had at his age. Not, I wasn't close to him. He had more faith and worked so hard and was so diligent in his work and getting his body right, which is as much as his shooting, getting his body. He's on a vegan diet. Yeah, I could do vegan for a morning. No, I probably couldn't do it in the morning. I'd probably do it in the afternoon. But he had more courage, more faith in himself, um, more belief in himself, and, and I told him that. So, you know, we're, we're, we're proud parents, and, uh, but I told him, hungry and humble, last game, now you're, they're going to take you away, so what are you going to do? You have to move to areas to where when they, they have to see you, you can't stand them. How about this one? You probably got to add a little ball fake and a two dribble to see what's there because they're not giving you that three. I said, but don't do the ball fake when you have a three. You've got to take the threes you have. So I'm coaching both teams. I'm coaching them <laughs> and I'm coaching my team. One more guy, I think before this year, no number one team had lost to a mid-major at home since like 93. It's happened twice now with you and Dude <coughs> last night. Does that say something about parity or is that something night? about this year? Big loss. Steve oh, Stephen, I, did we play them one year? Five, a couple years ago, yeah. They probably almost beat us. Kyle Keller's a good friend and does it. That, they beat them down there? Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I, I imagine it was close. I imagine it was a buzzer game. You know, um, when you have young kids, a veteran team can do that to you. And especially if it's not going right, you then those young kids have never been in that situation, especially early. So I would imagine you know the veteran teams have a big advantage on all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I like my team. Let get this team right and let's see who we are. We're seven foot. We're six eleven. We're six nine. We got this. We got good guards. We shoot it. We should be an unbelievable defensive team. Toughness and. So we, uh, I'm getting them to pass the ball to each other. I'm demanding it. You're seeing it, 20 assists, 19. That stuff I can take care of. The toughness you have to play with, the offensive rebounds you must get. That separates your team. If another team is getting 17, 15 offensive rebounds, you better do the same. You don't have to make 10 threes. You just can't make one. Make six, make five, make nine, make seven. You just can't make one. And this team is a good enough team that we should. So, you know, like I said, uh, I'm thankful for what goes on. And, and, you know, this is all him being injured. All right, how do we make this work for everybody? How do we take advantage of him being out? How do we make sure that we're looking at this to get better? And they looked at me this morning, and I'm like, look, I'm jacked up now. You know, there's no one feeling sorry for us, no one. And a lot of happy people, and I'm looking at it like, all right, let's go, let's do this. So thanks, Mary, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, let me let me say one thing I said on the radio show. Um, we're doing Salvation Army. I I would just all of the fans out there, all the the people that are involved in this, and we have the greatest fans. But I would tell you, 
Thanksgiving, if there's anyone in your neighborhood that you know is going to be alone, have them come to your house. Whether they're older, whether they're single, whether they're, they're just moved in, have them come to your place. Or maybe go somewhere where you can help others have a great Thanksgiving. This is a day for all of us tomorrow is that we should be giving thanks for the blessings that we've all um, have been given and, and pay it forward. Thank you. Thank you.